Flame characteristics. As a mechanic, you can honestly tell a lot of how a furnace is operating as far as combustion is concerned uh, by simply looking at the flame characteristics that are coming out of the burner. By observing the flame pattern on a gas furnace, the experienced technician can tell a lot about what is going on in the furnace and the gas supply. The shape, the color, the pattern of the flame are all things to keep in mind when you're looking at uh, the gas burner and watching it actually ignite. By observing it, uh, the fur uh, how the furnace actually runs uh, correctly can tell you what is wrong with the furnace as well. Sometimes you may not necessarily always have to start putting your meter, your voltmeter and uh, manometers on a, a piece of equipment right away. Sometimes you can just simply just watch how it works and watch how it fires to see if there's any issues that are going on with it. That's why it's important for most new technicians out there to spend time doing like preventative visits, preventative maintenance on equipment that's actually working already. That way you can get a, a, a feel of how the furnace and, and equipment it should operate when it's actually properly tuned and working. So you got a couple of problems that you normally run into when you are dealing with natural gas and how the flame actually looks. You'll run into types of things like with the flame lifting off of the burner. You'll have uh, what we call flame flashback. You'll have a yellow flame on occasions, uh, flame floating, flame rollout, or the flame is just simply too small. So this is what we're looking for with a good flame. Okay, it's a nice blue color. We got a nice dark, darkish color coming out through the center of the burner with a nice light blue surrounding it, surrounding the cone, so to speak. That's what we're looking for. The, the, the flame is nice and powerful. It's got a nice, a nice uh, form to it. With flame lifting, though, the flame actually is lifting off of the burner a little bit. Okay, and this is, can be a little bit turbulent. It could be noisy. All right, when the burner lights off, you can actually maybe have like a rumbling sound to it. And one of the causes, uh, and it can cause, sorry, carbon monoxide. The reason why it causes carbon monoxide is because you are actually having an incomplete burn. Okay, this is too much air. Too much primary air is getting mixed with the burner. Uh, your burner orifice might be the wrong size or your gas pressure might be too high. So anytime, if you look at the picture here, you can sort of see what, we're, what I'm talking about with the flame lifting. You can look right down in this, this area here. You can kind of see that the flame does not seem to be sitting on the burner. When, you, when a gas furnace lights off or even a, a, a gas stove lights off, when you see the flame characteristics, the flame should be sitting right on the burner. If it's lifting off of the burner a little bit, and it seems like there's like a little bit of a gap between the burner and where the, you actually could physically see the flame, that is flame lifting. Okay, flame lifting can be caused, like I said, through pri too much primary air. Too much air is getting mixed with it. The burner orifice is either is too large or your gas pressure could be a little bit too high. Flame flashback, on the other occasion, is uh, causes combustion to occur inside the burner. The flame will come out the wrong end of the burner tube, almost like a rollout. When this happens, it it's actually kind of like a really quick um, flash. It ignites, but it flashes at you. Uh, a rollout is more of like a steady 
it rolls out at you. Um, this way I could kind of describe it to you. Uh, this can be caused by low manifold pressure, too much primary air, a dirty burner orifice, a dirty burner, or low gas supply pressure. Okay, Not gas manifold pressure, gas supply pressure, the pressure that's coming into the gas valve can um, cause uh, a flame flashback. Your yellow flame has a yellow tip to it and can cause carbon monoxide and soot buildup inside the heat exchanger. When you're physically looking at a gas-fired furnace with a heat exchanger, there should be no soot inside there. If you got that, then your chances are you've probably got a yellow flame that's occurring. This is caused by inadequate or too little primary air being mixed with the gas. Your burner orifices might be dirty. You might have something restricting it. Okay, You may have a restricted heat exchanger. Having a restricted heat exchanger is going to happen over time, which means that if you ever run into a yellow flame from a burner, a natural gas-fired furnace like this, chances are that that burner is probably running that way for quite some time and is probably got more damage than just soot. Um, but you're going to want to investigate what, what has caused uh, the sooting. And obviously a restricted vent system can also cause it. Because remember, the vent is what is exhausting the um, byproducts of combustion, all of those nasty gases. If it's blocked up by either like a bird's nest, a beehive, um, even if it's blocked by snow uh, or, or ice or what have you, it's going to cause this type of issue. So you got to really look at the, the different areas of the furnace and the burner to kind of figure out what is actually happening and why it's causing the issue. Uh, a flame floating is when the flame actually waves around like a flag. It may seem unsteady. Uh, it may appear to have like a lazy, a lazy look to it. Uh, usually that's going to be caused by insufficient secondary air. Remember, secondary air is the air that surrounds the flame. You can have a restricted heat exchanger or air blowing flame uh, through the heat exchanger, which means you may have a crack in the heat exchanger. Anytime you see something of this nature, I would honestly, seriously look at the heat exchanger because chances are the heat exchanger is cracked. And if the heat exchanger is cracked, we need to shut the furnace down and condemn it because we are now putting the the people at at risk of carbon monoxide poisoning and dumping all those um, byproducts of incomplete combustion into the actual living space. So the flame floating is something that you really do if you notice it and you see it. Uh, is something that is actually very, very serious. A flame rollout is basically when the flame rolls out in the wrong direction, rolls towards you. Okay, And this is caused, again, by a restricted heat exchanger, a blocked vent system, inadequate primary air, or high gas manifold pressure. A flame rollout can also be caused by a cracked heat exchanger. Uh, this will usually happen when the uh, indoor fan motor turns on and starts blowing air across the heat exchanger is when the flame rollout will actually occur. Uh, it's because of that change in pressure between inside the heat exchanger and outside the heat exchanger, which will cause that uh, flame to actually shoot out at you. So look at all of those areas when you are uh, investigating and looking at a uh, the flame and how it actually it works. Just because a flame uh, and a furnace actually fires off what seems to be normal doesn't necessarily mean that it's running normal. Okay, it takes it may take a little bit of time, a couple minutes or so, for something to kind of rear its ugly head, if you if you know what I mean. So let the furnace fire off or let the appliance fire off, but watch it and see what actually happens. 
give it time. Let the the blower come on. Does the flame change? Does the does anything seem out of whack? Do you get a high carbon monoxide reading out of the burners? If you do, chances are you may have a crack in the heat exchanger. You have some sort of incomplete combustion that's going on. So as a mechanic, you need to investigate what is actually causing the problem. If the flame is simply too small, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a person calling and saying, well, the furnace runs. It fires, but I'm not getting a lot of heat. Okay, inadequate heat in the building. Okay, and this is going to be caused mainly by low gas manifold pressure, a dirty or blocked burner orifice, or the burner orifice may be too small. Okay, do not adjust orifice sizes without checking with the manufacturer's technical support. Okay, if you are going to think that the orifice is the wrong size, you need to research and do some investigating with the manufacturer. If the manufacturer's literature is there, read it, see what type of orifice is supposed to be in there from the factory, and then investigate and see if the orifice has been changed or or what have you. Okay, in my opinion, the orifice is the last part in a furnace that you're probably going to change. Okay, it's going to be something else other than the orifice. Okay, it's kind of like that last uh, ditch effort, and I guess in my opinion, of making a a repair to a, a furnace that doesn't exactly seem to be operating properly. Thank <laughs> you.